This is Shasta Trailer Restoration Project Part 20. I'll just jump right out there and answer a couple questions that I've been getting lately. Number one, have I given up on this project? No, I have not given up on the project. As a matter of fact, I can't really give up on anything. It's just my personality, sometimes to a fault. Number two, did I sell the trailer when you weren't looking? Or am I attempting to sell it? Negative on that one as well. You can see the evidence right here behind me. But it has been some time since I posted a video about the Shasta and an even longer time, about two years actually, since I shot any footage pertaining to its construction. So I can understand why you might wonder about its current state. This time lapse is also the reason for my narrow camera view and strategically placed chair. I don't want to spoil anything for those of you following along with the natural sequence of events. In the last episode, I had just finished installing this aluminum corner trim, and in part 18 before that, I had begun construction on a combination bench and bathtub assembly that I designed. But about halfway through that video, I was assaulted by some really nasty wet weather, and that really drove home the fact that I needed to get the exterior of the coach watertight before I did anything else. So that's what I focused on for the remainder of part 18 and the entirety of part 19. After that was done, I was free to go back inside and continue where I left off with the bench. And that's where we'll start today. I'll begin by cutting a piece of waterproof plastic to go right here. Here's the wall panel that I'm using. You'll recognize it from fast food restaurant bathrooms across the nation. I've heard that you can score and break this stuff. We'll find out together. I don't think so, folks. I think I'm using a saw. This fine tooth blade should do the trick. That's a smell I've never smelled before. Good enough for me. I've test fit this plastic, now I'll glue it into position. Now that this piece is where it belongs, I can temporarily set the tub in place, then mark out and cut a hole for the drain. Now I'll secure the tub to the walls with some screws through this flange. The bathtub is now installed. To trim it out, I'll use some PVC plastic exterior trim boards. I found these at the home improvement store. They've been ripped down to the correct height, and I've also taken a notch out of the back to accommodate this mounting flange. The trim is installed, and I'd really like to install the paneling that goes over this cabinet so I can start working on my folding bench system, but before I do that, I need to take care of a little plumbing behind here while there's still easy access. The trailer's original onboard freshwater plumbing consisted of nothing more than a water tank, a hose, and a hand pump. So the challenge that lies before me is designing and implementing an all-new bathtub water heating and delivery system. My grand vision for comfortable bathing is to use the original water tank, an electric pump, and a tankless water heater. Now as I understand it, while traveling, water is both a precious resource when it's fresh and a terrible burden once it's spent. And even though my tankless heater should deliver hot water on demand, there's still about 12 feet of pipe running from the water heater to the shower head. Now I don't want to endure 30 seconds to a minute of freezing cold shower but I don't want to let two gallons of water run down the drain either. So here's my solution to eliminate that initial cold water shock without unnecessarily filling the wastewater tank. I built this out of some old plumbing fittings and it gives the bather a couple of options. Hot water comes in right here and the user may allow the water to continue through the shower head for washing or they can turn off the shower valve, open up the recirculation valve, and allow the water to circulate back to the fresh water tank and continue warming. I don't know what a plumbing code is, but I say this is revolutionary. I'm drilling some strategically placed holes. Now I'll just slip this into position and screw it in place. 
Now I can install the inlet and outlet pipes. I've placed a piece of rubber tubing around the pipe to protect it where it goes through the floor. Next I'll get underneath here and tighten this up. My inlet and outlet pipes are installed so the valve assembly is ready to go and that means I can finally cap off this entire cabinet. I'll be using this thin paneling so I decided to add a little bit more bracing throughout because even though this isn't meant to be a seat, it's altogether possible that it may experience heavy loads. Okay, I've laid down lots of adhesive. It's curious that the more glue I use, the greater the chances that I'll have to take this apart later. Let's see if I can beat the odds this time. Alright, that's progress. Next I need to glue this plastic panel to the plywood. To attach it I'm using Robert's 2310 fiberglass sheet and luxury vinyl tile adhesive. I'm using this because I had it on hand, it's left over from my flooring and I don't want it to go to waste. This costs almost $30 a bucket. To spread out the glue, I'm using a 1 16th inch notched trowel. Now that I have a nice even coat, I can put the panel to the sticky. I never knew how useful discarded backup power supply batteries could be. Now we'll let that rest and check back with it later. Next I'll finish it up with some luxury plastic corner trim. This panel is now satisfactorily adhered, so now it's time to build a bench. And here's what I've been working on for a place to sit. It's a piece of one half inch plywood with some hinges attached so it can pivot out of the way to access the bathing station. Let's see how it fits. So far so good. Now for some screws. Okay, that's the last screw. Let's check the action. Ooh, look at that smooth operator from couch to clean in three seconds. And let me show you one more thing. How's this for versatile? With a few more easy steps. One moment. Bedtime. I'll just lay here and bask in my glory. Thanks for watching.